Dennis Rader tormented his Kansas community with a string of murders and taunted the police who couldn't solve his crimes, but it blew his own cover to an insatiable desire for attention. A family man, government worker, and church leader by day, Rader was smart enough to blend into his community and avoid detection for the string of victim stalking and killings that would build his sexual desires. He also controlled his impulses enough to suddenly stop the killings and disappear before the authorities could get too close to his trail. Yet it was his insatiable lust for attention that ultimately proved to be his Achilles heel. PTK re-emerged years later to remind police that he remained at large. But got too careless with his cat and mouse games, providing investigators with an opening to crack the once unsolvable case and bring the killer to justice. He's a double life. He doesn't fit the profile of what we would have expected for the BTK killer. So all of these incidents, these 10 counts, occurred because you wanted to satisfy a sexual fantasy, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. January 15, 1974. Raider kills four members of the Otero family. A 28-year-old married Air Force veteran, Raider makes the plunge into infamy after severing a phone line and entering the East Wichita home of Joseph and Julie Otero, the latter a former co-worker of the Coleman Equipment Company, along with strangling the two homeowners. Raider kills two of their young children, leaving three older siblings to discover the bodies when they arrive home from school later that day. April 4 1974. Raider strikes again. Catherine Bright, another Coleman employee, returns home with her brother Kevin to find Raider waiting with a gun. Kevin somehow survives a gunshot to the head, but he is unable to save his sister, who Raider stabbed to death. October 1974. The killer introduces himself to police. After one young man allegedly confesses, killing the Oteros with two friends. An editor at the Wichita Eagle receives a strange phone call that directs him to a mechanical engineering book at the Wichita Public Library. Police find the book and a letter wedged inside, which reads, in fart, those three dudes you have in custody are just talking to get publicity. The code words for me will be, find them, torture them, kill them. BTK, you see he at it again, they will be on the next victim. Along with including then unknown details of the Otero killings, the letter is filled with what authorities come to recognize as the killer's peculiar brand of misspellings and grammatical errors along with a distinct sexually suggestive signature. March 17, 1977 BTK murders a mother of three. Entering a home by way of the five-year-old child who opens the door, Raider barricades the boy and his two siblings in the bathroom before strangling their mother, Shirley Vian. The children eventually escape and provide police with a vague description of the intruder. December 8, 1977. BTK reports his next victim. After binding and strangling 25-year-old Nancy Pax, Raider heads to a payphone to point police to his handiwork. You will find a homicide at 840 South Pershing, he bluntly tells the 911 dispatcher. January 31, 1978, the killer reaches out with a poem. The Wichita Eagle receives an index card imprinted with a poem that begins with Shirley Locks, Shirley Locks, will thou be mine? Unaware of the connection to Shirley Bian and believing it to be a Valentine's Day note, the mail clerk forwards the card to the paper's classified department. February 10, 1978. The BTK threat is made public after another letter. Apparently, 
angered by the lack of response to his last attempt. The killer sends a more direct message to Wichita-based Kaki TV. How many people do I have to kill before I get my name in the paper or some national attention, he writes, before reeling up a list of suggested nicknames including the BTK Strongler, the Wichita Hangman, and the Asphyxiator. April 28, 1979, another target narrowly misses becoming the next victim. Raider lies in wait for Anna Williams, but gives up and leaves when the 63-year-old woman takes too long to return home. Less than two months later, Williams learns of her rush with death when she receives several of her personal items by mail, along with a form titled, Oh Anna, why didn't you appear? August 14, 1979 BTK's phone call is broadcast. Seeking help from the public, authorities release the recording of BTK's December 1977 phone call to report the death of Nancy Pax. Tips come pouring in from listeners who think they recognize the voice, though no relevant information emerges. April 27, 1985, Raider's neighbor is strangled. After an evening of bingo and dinner with her boyfriend, 53-year-old Marine Hedge is taken from her home in the Wichita suburb of Fark City, just down the street of Raider's house. She is found dead by strangulation eight days later, though police failed to connect her murder to BTK at the time. September 16, 1986 A husband takes the blame for the work of BTK. Bill Wetterley returns home for lunch to find his two-year-old son sitting by himself and his wife, Vicky, dead in the bedroom. In the absence of other credible evidence, the husband becomes the primary suspect in Vicky's death. January 19, 1991 BTK kills for the final time. BTK throws a cinder black through a sliding door at the home of retiree Dolores Davis. He strangles her to death and leaves her body by a bridge. Seemingly preoccupied by his day-to-day -day duties as a Park City compliance officer and father of two, Raider ceases killing and BTK drops off the map. February 25, 2005 Raider is finally arrested. Heading home from the office to have lunch with his wife, Raider is pulled over by the line of office cars trailing him and taken into custody. He confesses after being confronted with the DNA evidence and enjoys what he believes is a bonding session with the law enforcement agents. Although he is plainly irritated that land were lied to him about the security of communications by computer disk. BTK's arrest is announced at the Wichita City Hall the following day, drawing applause from the audience gathered. June 27, 2005 Raider pleads guilty to the BTK killings, catching prosecutors of guard by pleading guilty to 10 counts of first-degree murder. Raider provides the court with explicit details on how he selected, stalk, and finally killed each of his victims. His lawyer later notes that they went with the guilty plea due to overwhelming evidence against their client and the lack of firm legal footing on which to enter an insanity plea. August 18, 2005 Raider is sentenced to 10 consecutive life terms in prison. The two-day sentencing hearing features testimony from investigators who describe Raider's documentation of his torture-fueled sexual fantasies, emotional pleas from the victim's families, and an apology from the convicted killer, who expresses hope that the families will one day forgive him. Having committed his murders before Kansas reintroduced the death penalty in 1994, the BTK killer received a sentence of 10 consecutive life terms in prison for a minimum of 175 years without the possibility 
Opperol.